You know, I was gonna do some kind of intro here about the age of VHS tapes, VHS memories and all that, but nah, why waste my time and yours? So instead, just know that in Japan in the 80s and 90s, VHS tapes and video games were everywhere. And so were videotapes about video games. Produced to sell or rent in shops, given to retailers in order to promote upcoming titles, or distributed as promotional items through clubs, magazines, and special events. Video Games on Video is a video series about these videos, and I've said video way too many times now, so let's just take a look at five examples of said videos. Since this is the first entry of the series, I think it makes sense to start it off with what's probably the very first video game videotape I ever went out of my way to own, which is simply titled Warukure no Densetsu, or The Legend of Valkyrie. This tape, produced by King Video in 1989 as part of their computer game video line, abbreviated CGV, retailed for 4,000 yen tax included and was also available as a rental. It's essentially a perfect two-player playthrough and strategy guide for Namco's Smash Arcade hit, The Legend of Valkyrie. This expert run shows some great strategies for taking down bosses, reveals hidden item locations, and lets the player see the perfect ending with all elemental sprites showing up in the final screen, achieved by meeting certain in-game parameters linked to things like score and completion time. The screen is split in three throughout, one window showing the gameplay as is, and two smaller zoomed windows highlighting the protagonists and at times enemies and allies. But other than that, it's mostly a straightforward playthrough of the game done in co-op and with a single 100 yen coin, something very few people could achieve back in 1989, much less three decades later. It's a simple, but great collector's item for fans of the Valkyrie series. <laughs> Next up is The Making of Game, Ghost in the Shell VHS from 1998, published by Kodansha and produced by legendary animation studio Production IG, producer of some of the best anime of all time, including the Ghost in the Shell movie and standalone complex series, as well as stuff like Please Save My Earth, a personal favorite of mine. This tape was sold in stores for 1,905 yen plus tax at the time, and has a runtime of 30 minutes. While it is a mini-documentary about the fantastic PlayStation 1 Ghost in the Shell game, it's not about the game's development, but rather the process of producing its sleek animated intro movie, as noted by the tape's subtitle, All About Digital Animation. The tape provides a really interesting sneak peek into a pioneering period of CGI animation, comprising of staff interviews, explanations of how the latest technology was applied to create the awesome look of the intro segment, and a look at other animation cutscenes made for the game. There's even an interview with the man himself, Ghost in the Shell creator Shiro Masamune, who doesn't appear on camera, naturally. Also, keep an eye out for the mischievous Fuchikomas that appear throughout the tape. They're pretty adorable. This is an awesome documentary that's well worth a watch for people with an interest in digital animation or Ghost in the Shell. One of the great perks of being a gamer 20 plus years ago was that many gaming companies, both big and small, set up clubs for their most dedicated fans, where they would send out special gifts and promotional items, give member-only access to events and contests, and provide early and exclusive information in printed materials and, you guessed it, videotapes. Capcom was among these companies who had one of the better fan clubs with their Capcom Friendly Club, or CFC. Members of this club would receive videotapes like these every once in a while, and from here on we'll take a look at Volume 13 from April of the year 2000. It features previews of Capcom's upcoming games shown at the Spring 2000 Tokyo Game Show, where viewers get a special sneak peek at the presentations and reveals, hosted by one of Capcom's biggest stars, Chun-Li. And this is not just any old Chun-Li cosplayer, she's Kana Urasawa, the official Chun-Li model employed by Capcom, who has worked on many game projects with the company, mainly with marketing, but also recently acted as producer for the Capcom Fighting Collection. And she still makes a fantastic Chun-Li, perhaps even better now than before. Anyway, the time period in which this tape was produced is probably my favorite in gaming, the late 90s and early 2000s, the big transition from the PlayStation 1 to the PS2, Sega's last foray into console gaming with the Dreamcast, amazing arcade games, so a lot of the titles featured at the Capcom Friendly Club Video Volume 13 are among the best the company has ever made. 
In my humble opinion, of course. So much good stuff is covered here. We have short previews for games like Onimusha, Gunspike, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2, extended previews for titles like Breath of Fire 4, and a press conference about the Bioroid Year Zero horror comedy stage show set in the Resident Evil universe. One of the things I really enjoyed here is a Power Stone 2 match set up between Capcom employees in Osaka and convention attendees in Tokyo through network play. What a cool and exciting time. There's lots of footage from the ground floor in this tape too, making it an enjoyable time capsule for fans of gaming in the era. Game Tech Video, more commonly known as GTV, was the producer of some truly great and creative video game media in the 80s and 90s, including the Demo Demo and Play Play PlayStation Japanese trial discs for the PS1, some of the best demos ever made. Aside from those, however, they also put together some of the best gaming VHS tapes, one of them being the Famicom Perfect video from 1993. This 40-minute tape retailed for 1,980 yen, tax included and is a 10th anniversary celebration of the system, showcasing 100 of the Famicom's best and most popular titles from 1983 to 1993. Of course, you have your Super Mario Brothers, your Metroids, your Kirbys, all the great classics from Nintendo, but a huge variety of titles are given their due, including those on the disc system. This tape has a few hosts guiding us throughout, the first being Battery, a friendly bat puppet designed by the spectacular artist Susumu Matsushita, probably most known by video game fans in Japan for his work as the weekly Famitsu cover artist for decades now. Battery was host for a few other GTV video projects as well, some I'm sure we'll take a look at in future video games on video episodes. The other hosts include a panel consisting of some popular Japanese video game personalities from the time, the lucha mask wearing Mr. X, his supposed Indian apprentice, Indoman, the lovely Miss Mika Suzuki, and Koji Watanabe. These panelists were previously involved in GTV's video magazines, video game masters who specialize in a specific genre or style of game. Just a neat little aside on Mr. X, he's actually Mr. Hiroaki Takeuchi, who is still active as a producer in the gaming and anime industries today. Overall, the Famicom Perfect video is a fun look at some of the best of what Nintendo's first home console has to offer. 8-Bit Gaming fans, check it out! では早速ミカリンのスーパープレイを見せしましょう。まずはワールド 1の2 the last VHS tape we'll take a look at is another making of feature, but with some extra bonuses that make it quite special. It's the Not For Sale 1993 V-Jump Premiere Issue Super Premium Video, which includes another mini-documentary about a piece of digital animation, this time a television commercial promoting the inauguration of Jump's video game-focused magazine, Virtual Jump, more commonly known as V-Jump, a publication that is still active to this day. The ad stars a few of gaming and manga's most popular characters, the Chocobo from Final Fantasy, the Slime and King Slime from Dragon Quest, Kabuki Danjuro from Tengai Makyo, and Arade-chan from Akira Toriyama's Dr. Slump. For kids in the early 90s, this collision of worlds must have been truly awesome, as crossovers weren't really much of a thing in gaming back then. Arade-chan would sort of become the mascot of V-Jump in the early days, riding around the flying cyber machine, the Gulliver Mecha, which Toriyama designed exclusively for the magazine. In addition to showing how the commercial was made in a presentation of two versions of the finished product, a lot of video game commercials played the tape out. Stuff like Final Fight 2 for Super Famicom, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Mega Drive, The Game Boy Legend of Zelda, Squaresoft Seiken Densetsu 2 aka The Secret of Mana, games that would be popular mainly with young boys at the time. V-Jump was primarily a gaming magazine, but also featured comics like its bigger cousin Weekly Shonen Jump, and covered things like anime and movies too. Whatever the target audience was interested in. Here's the actual first issue that this video promotes. As you can see, it's chock full of color, art, info, and all about some of the best of 90s media in Japan and abroad. I love looking through old V-Jump magazines because of this, and also because of the specific games they focused on. Genso Suikuren, Tactics Ogre, Chrono Trigger. They're among my all-time favorites. I highly recommend you do the same if you have a fondness for similar things. 
As for the origins of this video, I'm not really sure, but I assume it was something readers of Jump magazines could receive in the mail by sending in a postcard, as this was the procedure for a lot of promo tapes back then. Dr. Slump, Arare-chan, Tengai Makio, Kabuki Danjuro, Dragon Quest, Slime, and Final Fantasy, Chocobo. Oh, and one of the most important characters, Galibar Mecha. The Earth from the Earth came to the Earth, the Mecha, あの鳥山明先生が V ジャンプのために書き下ろしてくれた夢のサイバーマシン今回初めて CG になってコマーシャルに登場する Those are just five of the many Japanese video game VHS tapes I own and just five of the thousands that were produced over three decades or so If you're interested in seeing any of these tapes in full I've uploaded all of them raw and unaltered on my second channel The Import Gaming for the Wind Dump so check them out there where I also post video game related clips and commercials and I might even do collection stuff there as well. Was this video just an excuse for me to plug the second channel? Yeah, probably. But whatever the case, I hope you enjoyed this small glimpse into the world of Japanese gaming and more specifically, Japanese gaming on video. And I hope to see you around for episode 2 and beyond. This is Jimmy Hoppe of Import Gaming for the Win. Take care.